Do you have like a dossier of all the worst things that people have said to you? So, you know, I, did, I have gotten this barrage of hate when I announced my, you know, literally from when I announced my candidacy onwards and, it, and I spoke about getting threats of gun violence. So then after the Christchurch terror attack happened and I got to do my first speech in the House about that, I had to recall that this is actually not an anomaly. Mm. I was literally getting threats of gun violence just from being perceived to be Muslim. Yeah. So that community has definitely been getting um, threats, you know, hate crimes. They've been reporting it. Yeah. And so that, that has always been the level of the, of the abuse that I get. I get a lot of love as well because I think um, as someone who is unique in terms of my background and the position that I'm in, I'm like my story and my face means a lot of different things to different people. So you kind of get people that are, I'm always really shocked by how excited and touched people are yeah. by having that representation. I didn't expect that, but then you get an equally really scared, panicked, angry mob who didn't expect to have that representation yeah. happen either. But I especially get it when I appear to be confident. Like yeah. they hate that, you know, don't be confident, just be grateful and quiet. Yeah. So it's that thing of you can participate um, as a woman of colour or as a migrant or refugee woman, but you know, like just once you get in, just quietly sit there, yeah. don't have opinions, don't don't behave like you deserve to be here essentially yeah. it's causing so much stress and it has it does have a silencing effect so when people speak about you know free speech it's kind of like well can you actually can you actually address the thing that's silencing um those without power yeah as much as you talk about um giving a voice to the people who already have it yeah what effect over the years like accumulatively has all of the sort of background hateful noise had on you and your relationships? Um, I think it causes anxiety. So I do, I have therapy for anxiety. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, you know, it's, it's probably started with giving me a, quite a strong dose of imposter syndrome back right. in the day in my um, life. I never saw anyone like me in the positions that I wanted to be in, you know, there's not a whole lot of refugees in the law um, or in the UN yeah. um, and and there's, there's not a whole lot of refugees doing a master's at Oxford, you know, like it's kind of a weird, every, every room you walk into you are different and underlying that is that you may be less deserving. So that, that certainly causes anxiety but I think now that it's in terms of actual abuse rather than microaggressions that you get every day undermining you generally. Um, it's, it's definitely a heightened sense of anxiety if I see something that's particularly threatening and it makes me worry about my family and um, worry about all the other sort of young women of colour that might be consuming it when they look at my articles and things, you know, you kind of feel that responsibility. Yeah. And you know, your heart kind of sinks. After the Christchurch terror attack, as it got more intense, we actually had to really catalogue the abuse that I was getting just in case it was, you know, we wow. realised, you know, there's some people out there that, act, that mean it. So we had some of the, the rest of our office who were white dudes step in and go, actually, we'll just look at it. And they were shaken. Yeah. Like, they'd never, they had no idea yeah. what the level was. It was like, it was a new world to them. Do you think that your colleagues in Parliament actually get? Do, they, do you think they actually understand what it's like for you? No, I don't think I don't think you can. No, and I think it, um, the other thing that we've talked about, or at least I've talked about with Louisa and Marama, is that it hardens you, and how to combat that. Mm. And so you know, you kind of you bring that that armor that you've had to put up. And that kind of lowered, um, you know, my I don't have any emotional reserves some days because yeah. I'm consuming all of that. There's that whole thing where we're trying to balance out um, having that exterior shell and having the defence mechanisms, but then not allowing that to change who you are. How bad is the problem? I am so happy that there's finally research on this and it's that, you know, we are 
experiencing microaggressions um, in a way that's causing us mental health harm to the same level as soldiers who are based in combat zones. So the Whoa. levels of anxiety and stress of just us living as people of colour in the world are at that level now. And the reason I'm happy that that research exists is because I think that it is really difficult for us to kind of talk about the tiny little ways that we're all um, being abused and not being kind of told that that's just a one-off and it's not it's not racism, it's not because of this, it's not because you're a, a you know, gay man of colour, it's actually just you didn't get the promotion. So, you know, <laughs> and so we can kind of go, actually, this collective gaslighting can, can end. Can it please end? Yeah. It is happening. Got the data to back it up.